Welcome to the Grow Your Law Firm podcast, brought to you by Pilma. This podcast helps lead lawyers to more growth, profit, and freedom. Here is your legal marketing expert and host, Ken Hardison. Well, hello, everyone. This is Ken Hardison, and welcome to another episode of Grow Your Law Firm. And today we have the distinct pleasure of having Mark Schaefer, who is a globally recognized keynote speaker, educator, business consultant, and author. Uh, also, his blog and his podcast, The Marketing Campaign, are top of the charts in the marketing field. He's a, he has advanced degrees in marketing and organizational development, holds seven patents, and, full, and is a, fal, a faculty member of the graduate studies program at Rutgers University. And uh, he's a best-selling author of nine pathfinding books. Uh, we're going to talk about one of them today, Marketing Rebellion. He just came out with a new one cumulative advantage which i have not read yet but i will mark and uh he's uh definitely been all over television new york times cnn harvard business review entrepreneur magazine he is truly a marketing guru and i i read this book he did on called marketing rebellion the most human company wins and he's actually going to be our keynote speaker at our pilma summit our Pilma Sumer Summit in, uh, on September the 30th. I think you'll be the second day to first speaker up. Uh, he's gonna be talking about uh, uh, humanism in, in marketing your law firm. So I, I can't wait for that, Mark. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, you spoke one time about three or four years ago at one of our events, you were a big hit. Everybody loved you and that's why I brought you back again. Oh, thanks. Uh, can't yeah. wait to do it. Yeah, so, you know, uh, it's, it's a honor for me to be interviewing you here today. You're just a wealth of knowledge and, uh, I look forward to picking your brain uh, okay. today. So let's get started. So in your book, you talk about marketing lies. What, what are you talking about when you say marketing lies? Yeah, uh, well, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really about, uh, uh, sort of a distrust that's happened over time between consumers and, and marketers. One of the things I show, when I was doing the research, Ken, I realized there's this pattern in history that every time that marketers do something to make customers angry, they rebel and they win. And so we have to sort of learn about, gosh, there are certain things that marketers are doing today that customers don't like. We need to get ahead of the curve because you know, they're, they're eventually going to win. The, the, you know, the lies, if you, you know, this is a great history lesson in for, for, in, you know, all the, in the legal profession would know all this, that in the early days of marketing, advertising was, they were remarkable promises. And as the competition heated up, it just became flat out lies. That's how we got all the snake oil stuff, right? Yeah. And then the consumers rebelled and they said, you're hurting us. And that's how we created the FDA and the FTC. And so we've seen this pattern through history where they don't want lies, they don't want secrets, and they want to be in control. They don't want to be manipulated. And so we need to get ahead of the curve and we need to really listen to customers and, and see what's happening in the market. And if we're doing things that are spammy, that customers hate, we need to stop it because eventually they're going to tune us out. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, nobody likes to be sold to. We all know that. But you're, you're right. I mean, I, I was thinking about it. And, and that's one of my big saying is that, that there's so many stake old salesmen out there now to lawyers. Yeah. Sell the next big silver bullet, the latest and greatest thing. And, and the deal is I tell all my, my followers, I say, there is no silver bullet. It, it takes a lot of little things. Right. You know, and, and, and it's... Uh, it takes trust. Yeah, you've got, you've got to be, you yeah, know, they did a study about 15, 20 years ago about TV advertising lawyers. And the two main things was as far as why would they pick a lawyer off of TV was trust and approachability. Yeah. So that, that kind of goes in line with what you're saying. In this exactly. Book. I mean, in, in, in the book, I talk about this study that was done at Princeton University that showed that whenever you meet uh, another person and you try to decide, um, do I think this person could be my friend? Here's the two factors they look at, warmth and competence. 
And they said, and then the kind of the breakthrough was they realized that's how people evaluate companies and brands too. Same with law firms. Are they warm in your words, approachable? Are they competent? Are these people that this is a big deal? I need to be able to trust them uh, to get the job done. And so one of the things I talk about in the book is this idea that increasingly, especially we see this in the legal profession, the, the, the personal brand is the brand. Uh, it, it's about showing your va- face, letting people get to know you in a, in a personal way, because that's what's going to build trust. Yeah, I've always said, uh, and, I, and I stole it from somebody, but I'm not sure who. So, <laughs> so I, I don't take claim for this, but I always preach that uh, people are going to hire lawyers and they're going to refer to lawyers that they know, like, and trust. Yeah. So it goes to that big word trust, though. And knowing, yeah. liking is being, like you say, you got to feel like you're warming up to them, that you like them. You 100%. Know? Nobody, yeah. old, my old mentor said, you know, uh, we were talking about it. Uh, I was talking about giving a discount because he was a friend. He says, Son, your damn enemies aren't going to hire you, so you don't need to give a discount to your friends. <laughs> he says, <laughs> that, "He says, God, that's the only people going to hire you to start with, right?" Yeah, that's right. All all my customers end up being my becoming my friends at some at some point. Yeah, so you know, I always preached about cu- uh, client loyalty, customer loyalty, and, and you say that it's 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 gone. What, it's what in do you decline. Mean yeah, for sure. And uh, this is one of the things, Ken, that was let's say just shocking to me (laughs) because I've been in the marketing world for a long time and loyalty is what I do. Loyalty is what I love. And the, the data, and this is, this isn't just my point of view. This is take it to the bank research. That's been done over decades from Deloitte and uh, Accenture and McKinsey. And they're all saying that there is this trend where customers are less loyal and we're in this world now where everybody's you know, flipping through their screens and they're looking for the best deal and the best price and they're looking for recommendations and, and reviews and testimonies. And you know, it, it, it doesn't really matter what you did for me before a, a, a lot of the time. They're just assuming that you know, these reviews and these testimonies are gonna lead them to the right path. And there was a clue in this McKinsey research, which I think is, really relevant. And I, I can't wait to, to be at your event in New Orleans and, and talk more about this. McKinsey said, what's missing is that people have forgot about emotion. They're automating everything. <clears throat> They're doing automated emails and spamming and algorithms and, you know, robocalls, whoever invented that and called it marketing. It's terrible. It is. I hate and, it. and so, and they forgot that what marketing is really about, great branding is about creating emotion between what you do and your audience is, is building some sort of emotional connection. And so that's really the theme that goes throughout this whole book is to remember what we're supposed to be doing here and don't lose it through technology and automation. Now I'm not anti-technology, but look how you and I are using technology. We're using this in a way because here we are in COVID and you know, you're locked in and I'm locked in and it's cold and it's freezing and we're using technology to have a human conversation. And I'm seeing you smile right now. And that it makes me feel great. So we're, we're reducing barriers between people by using technology. And that's, that's what we need to do. How do we use technology to remove barriers between us and our customers? You know, you know, uh, I tell my, my, uh, my Pilma members, I said, you know, you think cause you, you, they hired you and you got them a lot of money or got them a great result. They're going to remember you and come back to you. And I said, that's not necessarily true. I said, mm-hmm. you think that they're going to remember you forever, but the deal is they won't. And, uh, that's why I keep preaching about newsletters and, and yeah. social media, stay in front of them, top of exactly. mind awareness. That's so them- important. Yeah. Cause I mean, typically let's hope that someone isn't going to be using a lawyer every single month of the year. Right. And, and, and you need to have that drip, drip, drip just to say, hey, we're here. We found something cool for you. Just wanted to say hello. Look what's going on in our community. So I think you're you're exactly right. Yeah. It's uh 
So another part of your book that I really like, because I've been pre I've been preaching this. I'm a big follower of yours, by the way. I know you. Th I'm kind of giddy, but I, I just really think you're. <laughs> you're really, I just think you're really damn smart, and I, I, I'm glad exactly. I get this opportunity to pick your brain. So the greatest companies are the fans of their fans. Yeah. So what does that mean? I think I know what it means, but I want you to tell me what you think it means. Yeah. Well, you know, there's this thing that goes around in. Um, especially this, you know, content marketing. A lot of people are in content marketing today and they're creating a lot of content really a lot of times because they're afraid not to because everybody else is doing it. So they think they should do it. But there is, there is a lot of value to it. And a lot of people say, oh, well, content marketing should be about us and our story and our narrative. And people honestly don't care. They care about their story and their narrative and what they're struggling with. Yeah. And so the best marketing, the, the, uh, the best marketing really being done right now out there is when companies make the customers the hero of the story. And I mean, even in the, in the legal profession, right? I mean, you, you see these stories of people who are just so happy and have so much gratitude and they were so confused by the system and here we are and you know these people they led us by the hand and they fought for us and and uh so really it's it's how do you make the customer the hero of the story and really no one can tell the story better than customers he, you know th there's all this research that shows that people really don't trust companies and organizations and advertising. They trust each other. So, so it, when they see their friends and their neighbors and people in the community sharing a story, that is the best advertising you could ever buy. Yeah. That goes back to another one of my sayings. I, if you'll notice, I got a lot of sayism. <laughs> a lot of them I've stolen over the years, but some of them, I say, I say what you say about yourself is good, but what others say about you is golden. Yeah, you know, and all the studies prove it. That I mean, yeah. I've been doing a lot of research too on online marketing, and, and like eighty percent of the people are going to look at these reviews, these these Google business reviews before they make a choice. Yes, I mean, you know, they're looking at what other people say, and I've always said, I've said, I mean, Jay Abraham told me one time. He said I, I was I was doing a mastermind with him, and he I said you got like six hundred testimonials, Jay. I said nobody's ever going to read those those six hundred. He says you're right, Ken. He says. But the fact that I've got 600 and they, they know they can never get through with it and they're all good. Yeah. He said it just kind of just reinforces, you know, that, that I'm a good, that I'm a, that I'm good at what I do, you right. know, that, that I can be trusted, that right. uh, I get results and I'll never forget that. That was something yeah. that's, that that's been. It's the power, it's the, it's the power of, of, of social proof. Yeah. Social validation. Yeah. Yeah. And so a lawyer would be smart. We I mean, we had a speaker one time, and he wrote a book. On it. He said, "Never you, you when on your, your website or any market, never put I us we. It's all about you, them, yeah. you know, because like you said, they don't care about you. Everybody thinks yeah. they don't, but they don't like you. What's in it for me? Yeah, you know? and that's that's the we all are. Yeah. I am too. I mean, sure. I mean, you know, I always tell people they do this. And I said, okay, what's in it for me? <laughs> I mean, you know, that's the, that's the $64,000 question. I hear all that, but what's in it for me? So then testimonials would be a great thing to have. You, can't oh, get sure. enough, you cannot get enough of them then. Right. Um, so this is something, uh, values-based marketing. Yeah. What, what do you mean by that? Big, big issue, isn't it? Um, well, Values-based marketing, another way people talk about it is like purpose-driven marketing. And this, to me, it, it's a, is a very important topic, but a very controversial topic. And so um, we talked earlier, Ken, you are asking me about loyalty. And one of the last ways we have left is if we can express shared meaning or shared value values with our customers. So... One of the most obvious case studies is when Nike partnered with Colin Kaepernick, the, the quarterback, 
And he was a very divisive individual. Some people thought he was a great patriot. Some people thought he was a great, he was a traitor because he would kneel down before the national anthem. So Nike came out and did a whole campaign featuring him and a whole line of clothing featuring him. And there were people burning Nike gear in the streets. They lost $4 billion of market value in one day. In a, but in, in, in one week, they made it all back and more. So what was going on here? So I've got a friend. He's this you know middle-aged white guy that lives in Indiana. And you know he's a grandfather. And he said, I'm so angry. I'll never buy Nike gear again. I said, they don't care. <laughs> they really don't care because they're basically, they're, they're taught. One of the things I talk about in the book is to figure out where is your island? Where is your natural group of customers? Who are they? Where are they gathering? How do you connect to them? Nike knows here are the people that buy our gear. Who, you know, they're, they're this certain demographic group. They can spend $200 on shoes. They're obsessed with our shoes. And here's what they believe in. And if you get on that island and say, look, we are here for you, and we're, we believe in what you believe in, even when it hurts, you will have their loyalty forever. And they will, they will spend more on, on you than other people just because they believe in you. Now, I think many of the, your, your law firms may have marketing people, and they're probably going to get fired if they ever do a campaign where they're burning images of your lawyers in the streets. That's not a very smart thing to do, right? So it can be very, very perilous and it's not really for everybody. And there's a lot of advice out there saying, you've got to take a stand, you've got to show people what you stand for. And that is not necessarily true. Sometimes you just need a good lawyer. Sometimes you just want a hamburger because it tastes good. You, you don't care where they stand on, you know, gun rights or whatever. Just give me the hamburger. So, and, and one of the, the, the mental exercises I do with my students is I think, I, text, I tell them, think of everything you bought in the last two weeks. Could be a shirt, could be a book, could be insurance, could be a gift. Of all those things that you bought, how many of those items or those companies do you know where they stand on political issues? The answer is zero because you just want this stuff and you, you, you don't have to be political. In fact, there are ways to appeal to people and be uniting and be uplifting and you know, be unified. And that's what we need because a lot of people are suffering right now. Yeah. And, and, and so there are opportunities to, to show up in your community in a positive way. Yeah, we've had a lot of our or like our mastermind members, like they did, like we had one lawyer in Texas, he bought 50,000 masks. Now yeah. he put his little logo on the mask, but he give them, he, and he'd give them out and they'd be yeah. gone. And people yeah. with cars lined up for a mile to get wow. the, this is back. Sanitizer, did yeah. that type of deal. Yeah, uh, that's a great, them. I love that. That's fantastic. We had another one that went out and uh, all the local restaurants, he would buy food and deliver it to the firemen and, and, the, and the nurses and the, and the doctors because they were, you know, they were hurting. Yeah. And those other people were helping. And so he did all that too. And, uh, yeah. and he really didn't push it out on social media, but yeah. the press picked up on it. Yeah. And it all went crazy. And he got so much free. And well, he, he won't do it for that reason, but it just happened. Well, here's, here's why I love that example. Because think about what we talked about, that a great, a great company, a great brand creates an emotional connection between what they do and the customer. So here's this, here's this man or you know, one of your clients, and he's buying all this food or they're handing out masks. And marketing today in, in, this, in this COVID crisis, and we've got 20 million people unemployed, it means rolling up your sleeves and helping people. And it's an opportunity to not just build an emotional connection, but to become legendary. That's the guy that handed out the masks. I'll never forget him. He's yeah. the one that fed my father when, when he was, we couldn't get home because he was stuck working in the hospital. 
that's stuff that legends are made of. Yeah. And this is an opportunity to step up and not one of my favorite quotes in that book is you not to be in a community, to be of a community. Yeah. I agree. Show, I agree. show up, show up and show people what you stand for. Yeah. I mean, we did that at Pilma. I mean, I won't, I felt like lawyers, you know, all businesses were, were struggling, didn't know how to go remote and all that. So I started this whole free, you, know, you didn't have to be a member. I called it my coronavirus survival kit for lawyers. Oh, wow. And we had, we did it every week and we had somebody come on and talk and we'd talk about how to go remote, how to manage people remotely, how to deal, how to sign up clients, you know, how to use Zoom, how to have meetings, how to, how to keep morale up. And it was just how to PPP loans, you know, the whole, the whole nine yards and we were just giving it away. And you know what? I didn't do it at the time thinking about it, but we ended up getting a lot of big, follow, a lot of our following went up crazy and we ended up getting some members out of it. Yeah. But, uh, but I was just thinking it was the right thing to do, you know? And uh, it's funny. I, I always used to tell all my people at my law firm, I said, this, and this goes back to the values based, you know, we got our core values, you make all your decisions based on them. You don't have to come to me and just treat them like you would your grandmama. Yeah. And if you do that. Everything's going to be fine. We'll end up making money. I promise you, we'll all make a lot of money. And uh, that was kind of like, you know, very simplistic, I guess, but, uh, but I believed it. And, and we had hellacious referrals from our past clients because we really did treat them like they were our grandmother. You yeah. Know? I, I that's, said, that's a great, great perspective. I love that. Yeah. I, I stole it from Jeffrey Gittimer. Uh, yeah. he, he wrote this thing. He said, put grandma at the end of every sentence. And so that was part of our, they had to take a test on this for client service. And one of them was what you had to, what you had to put at the end of every sentence to a client. They says, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought that was pretty good, but I stole that. Like I said, I'll give Jeffrey Gittimer heat, but I just kind of infused it into my firm. But I, I think you're right. I think like you see in a lot of more people like Bombas, they give away a sock every time they sell a pair of socks. CVS, they did away with cigarettes because it didn't go in with their deal about trying to help people stay healthy. Right. You know, they took a hit financially, but I mean, you know, those are the type of deals people are going to have to make decisions on. And I think uh, you tell me, because you're the researcher, don't you think the younger crowd, they really, they're more into that. I know like uh, my, my uh, daughter-in-law and, and my daughter, they're all conscious about companies what they're doing for the environment or what are they doing for the people in the community? Yeah. yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're thinking about that. They want to do business with people that they think have got good values, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's true. And, and the, a very important thing that ties into your question and your observation, which is correct, that, uh, and ties into the book about this idea of the most human company wins is that, they're tr they're looking past your logo and your jingle and your ads. They want to know who are you, who is there, who are these people? You know, do they do they show up in the community? Do they help us when we need help? Uh, uh, you, do they have a good standing? You know, in our city, do they contribute to things that I believe in? They want to know who are these people. And the emotional attachment, you know, when you and I were growing up, it was because we got a coupon or because something's lemon scented or, uh, you know, it's faster or it's higher or whatever. And today people really have the emotional connection and the loyalty to people, not a product, not an ad, not a jingle, not because it's lemon scented. It's because they want to believe in the people. The, the, the emotional connection isn't to the brand, it's to people. Yeah. What is it they say? They don't care till they know how much you care. Something yeah. Like that. And really, I mean, the legal profession, if you, if you look at my book, the legal profession is ideally set up to I succeed know. in this. I know. Because it's all about people. It's all about, all about righting wrongs and, and justice yeah. and, and uh, you know, equality and and, yeah. and, and, and and righting wrongs. Right. I told people, I said, you know, some companies might have a hard time with it, like a waste company. I, I mean, you know, but maybe it, I've seen some, that's not a good example, but I was thinking about it when I was talking about it. Lawyers have got it. That's the easiest thing 
and I also talk about it with people trying to hire people. A lot of people want to be part of something bigger when they join a company. Yeah. I said, uh, somebody that makes uh, paper clips, I don't know how you can be something bigger. I mean, I guess you could try to stretch it. But what we do is 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 actually way making it something real bigger. Yeah, it changes change, lives. We change lives. We change lives. We change laws. Yeah. You know, we, we change. It, it's a lot. We, we, we do a lot. Lawyers serve a purpose. A lot yeah. of people don't like us until they need us. But, yeah. but we really, do. I mean, there's bad ones just like in every other profession. But for the most part, their, their heart's in the right place. Yes. Uh, you know, I think it's a noble profession. I'm proud to be part of it. And, you know, like I said, everybody hates lawyers until, except their lawyer or until they need a lawyer. Right. Uh, that's just the way it works. So talk about this consensual marketing. Well, this, consensual this was marketing. a term. I was, I was, um, I was in a meeting and um, I was working on the book. I was doing research for the book and starting to write it. And I was talking to this brand manager that works for a big, big uh, retail company based in New York. And he said, and I said, well, you know, cu customers today, they just, they, they, they don't want to be trapped in your marketing. They don't want to be interrupted. Uh, they don't want to be intercepted. He said, yeah. He said, it really has to be consensual. <laughs> <laughs> And isn't, I mean, so the, the idea behind that is, is to find out what do your customers really love? What would they love to engage in? And that's one of the big trends right now is this idea about experiential marketing. And especially before we were all locked into different places. So how can you create something that's interesting and fun that would involve people in your company and have them, uh, want to talk about it. Here's a funny little a, 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 a example. I went into a barbecue resta restaurant in, uh, oh, it was in some little town in Virginia. And um, right in the middle of this barbecue restaurant, there's a 15 foot tall fiberglass pig. Now the restaurant isn't that big. This pig is taking up a lot of room and he's wearing a tie dye t-shirt. So I asked the owner, I said, what is the deal with the pig? He said, that is my entire marketing program because everybody wants to take a picture with the pig. Now, you got to have good food, reasonable price, clean restrooms, and good service. If you do that and deliver the goods, then people are going to be happy and they're going to want to take a picture of the pig, share it on Instagram. And it's a reminder that they want to tell the story of what a good experience they had with your restaurant so that's sort of consensual marketing that if you if you do something good for them they're going to want to tell your story right yeah I, I like that makes definitely sense to me i mean yeah so when you talk about it comes all down to getting more human and human centered have you got any suggestions like i think you had a manifesto in the book but what, what are your suggestions what, what should lawyers or any any uh, the, any business should be doing yeah, I mean the the manifesto is a it was a kind of a weird thing. This 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 book almost killed me, <laughs> as you said. I, look, I looked at your big art for you. Did a I've never seen so many notes about where you, you did a lot of research. I mean, this yeah, one, I mean, you just sit and just pull out a pen and start writing. I, I tell it's you, it's an that. epic. It's an epic book, and <laughs> and it's a vast book, and it was a tremendous amount of effort. And um, I was about halfway through the book. And I covered so much material in the in, halfway through the book. Then the, the first half of the book is really talking about what's changing with customers, and what's the trends, and what's you know what's the research showing. And then the second half of the book is like some practical things we can do to start addressing it. So I was halfway through the book. I thought I almost need to like summarize where we are right now. <laughs> Yeah. So I came up with this idea of a manifesto. It's the shortest chapter I ever wrote. It's like one page long. And I just said, here are the 10 things you need to remember. 10 things you need to take away. Now, because now we're going to talk about the solutions. And if you go onto my website, you can, you can find the book and you can actually download 
this full color hand-drawn manifesto people have it hanging up in their offices it's just like you're the grandma thing right remember grandma at the end right. well this is sort of like let's remember what we're supposed to be doing here remember. and it, re it really boils down to to two things i won't go through all 10 things but it really it really boils down to two things number one Look around what you're doing in your company and stop doing what customers hate. If you know you're, 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 I, I talked to a lady today. She has this thing on her site called, called gated content where you've got to give your phone number and your email address before you get this white paper or whatever. And when people see that 95% of the time they go away. Now the, the economic value of that content, you're only going to have economic value of that content if people see it and share it. So if you're if if they're frustrated and they're blocked from getting this, why don't you just give it to them? And she, so she changed it and she said, "We took it down, and this thing went viral, and people are sharing it, and we're getting more customers." That was absolutely the right thing to do. So look at everything it, that you're doing. Are you doing anything that customers hate? Stop it. Then think about what can we do to be really to to show our faces our hearts, our passion in every customer touch point. You know, take the fake pictures off the website, put real pictures of our employees and our and our and the people that that love us. Uh, put real testimonies on there and and real stories. See what you can do to add your face, your smile, your heart to the content that you're producing, to every email, text message, meeting. A conference call, Zoom call. How can we be the most human company? How can we be the most human law firm, the most human whatever, bank, hospital, college? That's what's going to win in the end. It is because that's what's in our DNA. Well, listen, yeah, this is a great book, man. I'm, I'm telling you. And uh, thank you for taking the time to write it. Because, like I said, I, I looked at the big bibliography at the back of it and I said, this man did a lot of work for this book. This, <laughs> this was one Sunday afternoon, having a sip of whiskey, thinking about, oh, I'm going to theorize here for the next, you know, 200 pages. Yeah. Uh, no, no, there was a lot of research. It's not just the conjecture. It's like you said, it's research. It's the facts. It's not what you think. It's proven. Right. So so you were talking about your website. website uh, so what is your website? And People can go and download this, uh, the 10 point manifesto sure. about how to be more human well if uh all you have to remember is businesses grow businessesgrow.com is my website i've got a free blog i give away all my best ideas every week uh i have a podcast which i think is actually hilarious <laughs> i think it's the most entertaining business podcast out there it's called the marketing companion and that's free. I, I put out an episode about every other week. So it's not too much. Right. And then you can also find my books. And on each of my books, I have a lot of bonus content. So marketing rebellion, there's a free workbook, completely free. There's a video, there's this manifesto. And I tried something different actually didn't work. <laughs> but there's a coloring book on there. <laughs> well, you, got, you, know, you got a test. I always say you have to test, right? I, I thought, well, wouldn't it be fun to give the kids something to do? So I took stories from the book and I had a woman uh, make this little coloring book, but that didn't work. <laughs> but but the manifesto was super popular. The workbook is completely free that goes with the book. And uh, yeah, so I, there's just a lot of things that can add a lot of value there. Well, Mark, thank you so much. And uh, I look forward to hearing you in September at our Pilma Super Summit. And uh, thank wait. you for your time today. This has been one very of my favorite events in one of my favorite cities. Well, thank you. Thank you. We look forward to having you again. All, All right. right. Thanks, Ken. Thank you. Thank you. Until next time, this is Ken Hardison, dedicated your success. You have been listening to the Grow Your Law Firm podcast, the podcast that leads lawyers to more growth, profit, and freedom. Go to growyourlawfirm.com to find more ways to market and manage your law firm. Please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen to your podcasts.